Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. Are you looking for practical ministry help to drive your ministry further, faster? Have a sinking feeling that your ministry training didn't prepare you for the real world? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others in pursuit of stuff that we wish they had taught in seminary. Buckle up and let's get started with this week's Unseminary Podcast. Well, hey everybody, welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. My name's Rich, the host around these parts. Every week we get great leaders on to help wrestle through some practical you know, issues that you face in your church. And I'm just so glad that you've decided uh, to spend some time with us today to pop us in your earbuds. Uh, today, uh, we've got a great guest on, Dino Rizzo from uh, ARC, the Association of Related Churches. He's also an associate pastor at Church of the Highlands, one of those fantastic churches. we had a few leaders uh, from Church of the Highlands on. I'm just so glad you're on the show today, Dino. Oh, thanks so much. It's a, it's a real honor, and I appreciate you. Oh, no, that's that's great. For folks that don't know, the ARC, or Association of Related Churches, is really a, you know, a, a, a church planting, church support organization started by six pastors about 15 years ago. They've launched literally hundreds of churches. What, what, how much are you up to? How many churches are you up to supporting now? We're right at 566, that's which is amazing. kind of exciting. It's, it's been a fun, it's been a fun couple of years. That's amazing. Uh, watching, you know, it, it, it grow. And yeah, it's 15 years old. Our founder was Billy Hornsby, who was just we called him the biscuit, you know, from Louisiana, <laughs> and was just a great man and put us put us in the right trajectory. He passed away a couple of years ago, but mm. uh, he, he's still in, in all of our hearts. Nice. Very cool. Well, why don't you tell us about ARC and then tell us about uh, a bit of the Dino Rizzo story. <laughs> well, I mean, ARC began with a conversation that Billy Hornsby and Greg Surratt had, Pastor Greg Surratt there in Seco. So he's, mm-hmm. just, he, he, he's my boss. And so... Uh, it's just it's just a great a great conversation about what could it be like if we came together mm-hmm. and helped plant churches where we didn't have to go through it the way all of us did. <laughs> you know, my wife and I we planted a church in 1993, mm-hmm. a healing place church in Baton Rouge, pastor for 20 years, mm-hmm. and we started man we started with with nobody and no money, mm-hmm. uh, and so that, I, I was I, I was brought into a conversation then and uh, along with Scott Hornsby, and then we said you know let's plant some guys. And so the first two guys were. Chris Hodges and Rick Bezet. They planted on the same day. That was 15 years ago. And so it's been a lot of just learning. Uh, mm-hmm. We, in you know, our office is here in Birmingham now. Mm-hmm. We've got a great team, a great staff. And uh, we do a lot of, uh, a lot of assessing, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, pre-launch coaching, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of conversation as it relates to resources and building a launch team. And what does your experience look like? And what does your prayer base look like? And you know, and, and, and how are you, you putting together the different aspects of ministry? And so it's a lot of fun, man. We're just having a blast helping couples live out the dream in their heart. Mm, very cool. You know, I know you obviously have a, a great perspective. You've, you know, influenced a lot of church leaders. You get a chance to see a lot of different church leaders. And in your, you know, own kind of journey, when you look back at kind of, you know, as you're, you know, coaching and leading leaders, what would you say are some of those demands that, that are, you know, that come onto church leaders that may, you know, maybe derail or push them in the wrong direction? What, what does that look like for, for you? Well, I mean, you, there's so many, and mm. a lot of them are self-imposed, mm. you know, and I, I know I went through a time where I, I derailed a little bit and just mm. tried to just tried to sort things out. And, you know, if you don't have good friends, if you don't have a good pastor, if you don't have people in your life that you can bounce things off of, mm. I think sometimes we feel like we've got to... We, we've got to have the answers to everything and we've got to be the man. And it's hard to, so true. you know, raise your hand and say, I have a question or I don't feel good. Or can I go to the bathroom? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we just stay stuck and mm-hmm. sometimes we're unhealthy and we're overwhelmed and uh, we're stressed. And so I think watching great leaders and communicating with leaders and, and, and going through the ups and downs. That's one thing I love about ARC is we have a group of friends that we've been friends for a while, and we've been through the ups and downs, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm. And at the end of the day, we need each other. We can't isolate. Uh, we've got to be willing to sit at a table with people that are not impressed with us, that'll ask hard questions. And then if we're not doing well, that they'll let us in a safe harbor get healthy, mm. whether it's our marriage or dealing with our kids, or our money, or just own personal pain or personal defeats, mm. or sometimes our successes that get us all jacked up. Mm. And uh, and so it's just, you know, community and commu- and conversation is huge among leaders because if you're alone in your own thoughts, mm. uh, you can go crazy. Absolutely. And I think a lot of times church leadership, I know I can identify this in my own, you know, world, it can be sure. a fairly isolating experience. It can, you know, you look around and you're like, I can't really talk to the people in my church. I have a hard time doing that. They're coming to me all the time with their problems. How do church leaders, how do pastors develop relationships with other, you know, safe folks? 
folks that love them, but I love what you said, aren't impressed with them. <laughs> you know, yeah. folks that are like, hey, these are people that I, you know, uh, ca- they care for me, but at the end of the day, or they know we're, they know we're human. How do you build those relationships? What's that look like? Well, you, it's risky, and you mm-hmm. got to put yourself out there. And, um, you know, they've got to be spirit led. They've got to be a little bit of kind of, you know, I, I use the word, it's got to have a covenant feel to it where, mm-hmm. hey, man, we're in this thing. You got blood, I got blood. Uh, it's, it's reciprocal. Um, you know, this whole, you know, I'm waiting on someone to mentor me. That ain't going to happen. Right. Uh, I, I better, I better connect. I better step out of my, my closet and connect with someone and not be isolated. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I used to surf back in the day when I was a whole lot thinner and a whole lot younger. <laughs> and we always had a rule. My dad and, and mom, I could go surfing at five in the morning. I could surf almost till dark. And one rule, don't surf alone. Don't mm-hmm. surf alone. The tides, the current, the sharks, mm-hmm. you know, the crazy, um, it's just too risky. And I think it's sometimes, you know, you could pastor if you're pastoring alone or you don't want to plant a church alone. So I think, you know, you, you've got to be able to, to uh, put yourself out there. You want to be able to not be afraid to risk. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think there's ways, I think there are people out there, there are big brothers that want to connect with you. Mm. And, uh, and so I think you got to pursue it. You can't wait on it to come to you. Mm-hmm. Why don't we talk about both sides of that conversation? Let's say you'll put yourself in the shoes. Maybe it's a young church planner. Maybe it's a young leader at a church. And you, they're, they're today they're sensing they're a bit lone, alone. How do they start that conversation with a big brother? What does that look like? I, you know, how, how, would they, how would you suggest they even begin that? I would find out someone who I think cares about me and loves me and loves my family and doesn't love me for what I could do for them mm. or doesn't love me because of some ministry success. Mm-hmm. And I would call them and go to coffee with them and have conversations with them mm-hmm. and, and try to relationally connect with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if I'm someone who wants to, to do that, then I would look around and kind of see who is there a spirit born connection. Mm-hmm. Is there people that God has put in my life? that I feel a responsibility to to reach out to them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think you got to take steps. You mm-hmm. just got to get out of the boat and take steps and, and, and know that the, that the risk of isolation is greater than the risk of putting yourself out there. Right. And uh, so I, I just think that's key and, and that's so important today. We try to do that with church planners. We always match them up with a coach or match them up with some other guys that are planting so that there's a similarity of experience and they're, Hey, we're in this thing together. And so, it's just huge and important, and I, I've seen the pain of it in my own life when I isolated and the, and the consequences of that, and I've watched that with, with buddies, and uh, it, it's, it's better to not surf alone, surf in a pack, find a squad. <laughs> nice. Now, what does is, what is a kind of healthy rhythm for you look like these days? Obviously, a part of this is, is getting your life pattern kind of into, into a you know, healthy rhythm, rhythm for your, yourself. What, do you, what, would you, what does that look like in your life, and what, is, what do you suggest for other pastors or leaders? Well, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from my pastor now, Chris Hodges. Uh, he's very healthy and, 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 and with a growing church like it is and the demands that he has on it and watching what's happening around here. Um, I was not good at it for a long time, to be honest with you. I just was, I just ran hard and never said no and uh, probably was uh, a little unhealthy on approval addiction and uh, just yes to everything. I don't think it was out of being wicked. I think it was... I was consumed with helping the poor and making a difference in people's lives. And it was that old school kind of youth pastor, die for the cause. Right. So I, I was dying for the cause, all right. right. And, uh, and, and so was my, all of, everybody around me. So here's what I do now. Um, I don't let uh, technology rule my life. Uh, there's a time that I put the phone down, and there's a time to, um, to, to not let your— because we're the, we're the first generation that has a whole world in one device. Uh, and, and that's tough. Uh, I sleep. You know, there were times that I had horrible sleep patterns and I didn't sleep and I stayed up way too late and I didn't get enough rest. When you don't sleep well, you don't have good thoughts. Matter of fact, if you're sleep deprived, you can have irrational thoughts about people and things that you're doing and you're even yourself. Um, you know, the other thing that I do is uh, I have honest conversations now more than ever, very transparent conversations. Um, I think I have uh, ranked things differently in my life of what is true success as it relates to my wife and my children mm. and deep friendships, being able to sit on the back porch and drink a cup of hot tea, uh, being able to read, learn how to do nothing um, for the sake of just rest. And so I think I've learned how to rest. I've learned how to chill. 
I don't overreact like I used to. I lived very overreacting for a lot of years. And, and I see a lot of guys doing that today. They overreact a lot. And they're, they're not, um, there's just not a settledness and a peace. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, we have to believe in the sovereignty of God. Know that God is sovereign. And, uh, I, you know, we got to have healthy rhythms. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I have a couple guys in my life now that help me with that. Right. So I have, I, with my calendar, because mm-hmm. my calendar can get crazy. Mm-hmm. And then I, I kill all my margin. I have no margin. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the engine never rests. And, I, and, and it's hard to work on a hot engine. Mm. And sometimes the engine has to cool. And I never let my engine cool. Then I have a couple kind of uh, coach uh, counselors that I speak to about once a month. And, and we ask questions about my, my rhythm. Mm, that's very good. I, you know, there's a lot packed in there. I hope if you're listening in, I know there's a lot of church leaders that find themselves tired today. A friend of mine talks about being dangerously tired um, <laughs> and just actually unplugging um, and saying, I've got to slow down. You know, that it's at the end of the day, it's the Lord's church. It's not my church. And, and you know, it, and it will go on um, even if we turn off the phone <laughs> and go to sleep, um, you know, for sure. Now, what would you say, um, you know, maybe there's a church leader today that senses, hey, I, I think things are a bit out of balance, but I'm not sure what first steps to take to kind of get life back in balance. Um, you know, what would you say, you know, what would be some of those first steps they could take? Well, you, you got to kind of do an inventory. You know, mm-hmm. how's my soul? How's my spirit? How's my relationships? Ask your wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, lean into your children. Uh, maybe there's somebody in your life that you have that relationship with. Look at your calendar. Do you have margins? Mm-hmm. Are you uh, are you honoring the Sabbath? Mm-hmm. You know, do you actually have a time where you do nothing? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so uh, true, honest appraisal, not that kind of fake appraisal. Uh, where you really look and say, you know what, I've not had a day off. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have not prayed or studied uh, for Jesus' sake in a month. Mm-hmm. Everything I touch, it's about presentation. Mm-hmm. And I know that there was a time in my life where I realized that all of my prayer and all of my prep was for presentation's right. sake. Right. And if all of your prayer and all of your, your prep in your spirit and soul is for presentation's sake, then you're going to end up with a, a vast deficit in your soul. And so there are days that now, you know, do you ever spend some time in worship? Do you ever spend some time in meditation? Not for leading, mm-hmm. just for loving God. That's a good place to start. I'm telling you, at the end of the day, I think one of the things that I've learned at Highlands that uh, I think have helped me become more healthy is just old-fashioned prayer. Mm-hmm. And just do I have time to spend with God? Mm-hmm. If I don't, I am headed for a train wreck. Mm, very true. You know, just changing gears uh, a little bit, you've really been a leader in, um, you know, combining both service and evangelism together to see, you know, I think there was a false dichotomy for too many years between, you know, kind of the proclamation and the demonstration of the gospel. And I think you've really been a, a leader in, in both thinking and kind of pushing churches to think that way, which I appreciate that. And I just thank you for that uh, in all the ways that you've done that over the years. You know, what, are, what is your kind of current thinking on how, you know, we should be serving our communities and really community transformation? And what does that look like? What are you, you know, kind of where are you at with that these days? Well, I, I'm still dedicated to it. And that's one of my roles here at Highlands is I oversee all of our outreach and at all of our campuses, uh, local, and then also national with ARC and, and a thing we do called Grow, and then also with international. And so I love how you said proclamation and demonstration. You you nailed that one, my man. I'm going to steal that one. <laughs> great. That's, okay. That's just it's, great. It's, yeah, it's not my idea. So go, go ahead. Please use yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's those are great bookends for the gospel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I... I didn't start out, okay, we're going to do this. It was just because of where we were serving in Louisiana, you know, you just were dealing with a lot of people that were struggling and they were having hard times. So we just realized that, man, we need to be the hands and feet of Jesus. They're not going to hear us unless they see us. They're not going to, it's not going to touch their heart if it's not touching their life. And so we were kind of forced. Uh, I think God put us in a spot where we had to merge the two. There wasn't a choice. And out of that, I just really began to see all throughout Scripture that I just believed it was the way of Jesus, uh, just loving people, being out in the community. He was there. He was among them. He was touching. He was caring. He was noticing. And uh, I think it begins with noticing. That's a big, important word that, that I believe. If you're going to impact a community, if you're going to see people come to Christ, you got to notice what's happening around you. Mm. you got to notice the pain. you got to notice the cry. 
you got to notice the tragedy and the heartbeat and the, and the heartache of what's going on around you in your community. And I think there's a lot of ways to do that. It's just keeping your head on swivel when you're out. It's looking at your local newspaper or local, local paper online. It's just knowing what's going on, who's taking their life, what type of domestic violence is going on, who's hungry, what schools are failing, what people are falling apart, what type of addiction is going on. And just, Lord, how can we be the hands and feet of Jesus? And I don't think it costs a lot of money, nor does it take a lot of people. I think one person can make a difference. Man, I appreciate that. Is there anything else you want to share before we kind of pivot into the rest of the episode? No, I just appreciate this. I always love being able to communicate, and, and uh, I love the title, The Unseminary. <laughs> That's <is> awesome. <laughs> nice. I went to Bible school, and uh, the other day I was, uh, I just got asked to serve on a, a, a college board, like to be a trustee. <laughs> so you send in your resume, and they, and they do all this stuff with it. And I was looking at my associate's degree in youth ministry and adolescent counseling. And nice. I was like, wow, that one's going to carry a lot of weight. <laughs> Not Dr. Dino Rizzo come, you know, <laughs> coming in. That's amazing. That's great. So anyway, it was kind of fun. And, and so I think these this resourcing yourself is the difference to me from uh, in leadership. You got to resource yourself. You got to learn, 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 learn. This is the Unseminary Podcast. Stuff you wish they taught in seminary. Well, we're going to jump into the lightning round, that part of the episode where we ask similar questions of everybody that's on the episode. Today, it's our honor to have Dino Rizzo from ARC and from Church of the Highlands with us. Uh, it's been just a great conversation so far. What's an online resource you're using, Dino, uh, that's helping you uh, in your ministry? You know, I've just learned how to kind of work on a computer the last couple of years. Nice. So this, I'm like an, I'm like a kid at a candy store. So <laughs> I know we use within Arc our team. We use that that platform or app Slack. Yeah, which has been huge for us huge. in in uh, group communication. Uh, we we tried different things and and we had some errors with it and some fails with it. So we use that for. Uh, our staff at ARC, so we have about 20 people on staff at ARC. They're here in Birmingham. And then we have a lead team of pastors of about 17 pastors who who are, are our lead team at ARC. And then in that, there's an executive level, guys, the founders. So what helps us is to be able to communicate at those different levels through one app. So that's kind of one that I've learned and we're using it. Yeah, fantastic. Slack's a great resource. A lot of churches that I know that use it have talked about cutting their email in half because they're using Slack. So yeah. uh, it's a great tool for sure. What's a book you've read in the last, I don't know, six months to a year that's shaping your thinking or ministry? You know, I've been reading a lot of Patrick Lencioni. I just mm -hmm. love him because I think he asks great questions. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those are things that I need for myself is I need someone to ask me, a great question mm -hmm. and uh, and I think he poses those in all of his books and uh, so that's what I've been reading the last year year and a half there's a there's there's two books that I, I read constantly one of them you hardly can find it's called High Adventure in Tibet by Victor Plymeyer which was a missionary to Tibet uh, a, a long long time ago and he uh, he went to Tibet for 16 years before he baptized one person wow. And I'm like, man, that's perseverance. And the other one is called Into the Heart of the World by Mother Teresa, which is a novel on compassion and understanding how to reach the poor. So those are two other books that I keep in my briefcase to just refresh me constantly with, uh, I think, the heart of Christ. Cool. What's another ministry that you're looking to that's inspiring you these days? You know, yesterday I sat down with some guys from Gateway, and it's just fantastic. Bobby Bogart, Mike Grisardo, those guys are so smart at Gateway. Uh, uh, you know, and, and just the right heart. Pastor Robert is, is just a legend. And then, you know, you're always looking at Hillsong, mm -hmm. and they have such a voice for the next generation, mm -hmm. and really our generation. Mm -hmm. I love Pastor Brian. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's a great leader. Uh, I love watching uh, Furtick. Uh, I enjoy listening to him preach. Uh, and i tell you what, probably I listen to T.D. Jakes preach still, every other week. Now, can't nobody preach like T.D. Don't even try. <laughs> don't try don't, that. Don't roll up in that pool and try to do T.D. Jakes. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what, he, the way he thinks mm. is, I don't know anybody who thinks like he thinks mm. when he reads the Bible. Mm. So he makes me think better thoughts. So mm. that's, that's someone I look to. Very cool. If you get 15 minutes with any leader alive, who would that be and why? Oh, goodness. I, I struggle with this question. I think there's... <laughs> Probably to date would be Joyce Meyer. Oh, I love nice. Joyce Meyer. I yeah. think she's built a great ministry. Yep. Uh, she has compassion on people. She's a great teacher of the word. Uh, she's, a, she's a good mama to a lot of churches. She's done a lot for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We would not have made it, and I, I think this is so important to say, we would have never made it 
at Healing Place Church during Katrina if it wasn't for Joyce and Dave Meyer and her son David and Danny. They they reached out to us. They gave millions of dollars hmm. to the people of Louisiana. Hmm. And she's just one of the most generous people I've ever met in my life. Hmm. And she's a great leader. And you know what else I love about it? Mm -hmm. She teaches uh, everyday stuff. Mm -hmm. So she helps me have practice. So, so I'd probably like to spend 15 minutes for a day. Yeah, very cool. Well, that's great. Well, I appreciate you being on the show today. I know you're obviously incredibly busy, so I appreciate you giving us your time. And, you know, there's a lot going on with ARC. But when you just want to kick back, have fun, kind of relax a little bit, what do you do for fun? Oh, man, I'm uh, going to hang with my wife. We're going to drink hot tea. Nice. We're going to laugh. We yeah. may shop. Uh, we may take a walk. Nice. And we're, we're going to tell stories about youth ministry when we were <laughs> broke and buying french fries we're gonna we're gonna laugh about our decorations our hairstyle yes. uh the clothes we wore so that's what i enjoy and then i you know of course love hanging out with my kids my daughter graduates tomorrow from lsu nice. and then my son is in school in florida my daughter's a, a freshman mm -hmm. uh, it's my call dylan isabella and then i love a few friends i got mm -hmm. good old cajun louisiana mafia friends <laughs> and we get together we laugh and nice. we just enjoy that god has been merciful to us. Mm. Well, Dino, I really appreciate being on the show today. If people want to get in touch with you or with ARC, how, what's the best way to do that? Well, you, I mean, ARC is always easy. Uh, you know, I'm Dino at ARCchurches.com, so that's my email address if anybody needs to get a hold of us. You know, you look at the ARC website, Church of the Highlands website, mm -hmm. all those ways uh, to get a hold of us and, of course, other social media platforms through Dino Rizzo. That's great. Thanks so much. Appreciate being on the show today. Hey, thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Don't be shy. We'd love to connect. Check out Unseminary Inbox. You can sign up at unseminary.com and we'll send you helpful training resources every week. Plus, you'll gain immediate access to our exclusive members area with tons of resources you can use. Connect with Rich on Twitter at Rich Birch or through email, rich at unseminary.com. Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode at unseminary.com. It includes links to what we talked about today and more. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Did you enjoy today's episode? Drop by iTunes and leave a review. Thanks again for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Join us next week when we'll learn more stuff we wish they taught in seminary. <laughs>